the Huawei MateBook 14. If you have yet to catch our take on this laptop, do check out our previous video over on the Features channel or our website where we talk more about the features of this laptop and honestly, how great of a value it really is. But today for this video, we aren't sponsored. So, we're going to dive a little deeper and talk more about the AMD Ryzen chip that powers this laptop and see how the MateBook 14 stacks up against its own family. So let's go through the specs of the MateBook 14 one more time. This laptop is powered by an AMD Ryzen 5 4600H, which is a processor that has 6 cores and 12 threads. This is coupled with 16GB of LPDDR3 RAM running at 2133MHz, and you get storage in the form of a 512GB PCIe SSD. Just looking at the spec sheet alone, the MateBook 14 looks really promising. But what makes it even better has to be the sticker price. You get all of that at just under 1,300 Singapore dollars. Not to mention that the design of the laptop itself is pretty great, along with an awesome display, good keyboard and trackpad, so on and so forth. All of that at a really reasonable price. But let's talk a little bit more about that Ryzen CPU. As mentioned, the Ryzen 5 4600H has 6 cores and 12 threads, with a base clock speed of 3GHz and a max boost clock of 4GHz. The chip is based on the Zen 2 architecture and does also come with integrated Vega graphics featuring 6 graphics cores. Now at the time of writing, the other two main laptops which Huawei have in their lineup would be the MateBook 13 and the MateBook X Pro, and they both still feature the 10th generation Intel U processors both of which we've actually reviewed. Links to them down below or up here. The MateBook 13 comes with the Intel Core i5 10210U, while the MateBook X Pro comes with the Intel Core i7 10510U. These two processors are largely similar to one another, featuring four cores and eight threads, with only minor differences such as the clock speeds and the amount of cache. With that said, let's begin comparing performances between the chips by going into our standard benchmark test of Cinebench R20 and DaVinci Resolve. As you can probably tell, the results paint quite a different picture from what's on the spec sheet, especially for the MateBook X Pro. And honestly, it all comes down to how the system manages the balance between the thermals and the performance of the chip. For the MateBook X Pro specifically, Huawei has decided to be really conservative. The temperatures are in fact well maintained, hardly ever surpassing the 80 degrees Celsius mark. But the reason for that is because it was power throttling. The CPU limits the frequency way below the base clock during extended workloads, and it doesn't utilize its full rated 15 watt TDP as well. The result does provide a quiet and comfortable user experience. You barely feel the heat at all but it really is underperforming given the specifications and the sticker price. As for the MateBook 13 and the MateBook 14 that I have right here, these two laptops are much more similar to one another. Be it for light tasks or creative work, the two laptops will perform arguably the same and will provide with you a great user experience. The differences start to show when it comes to the programs you want to use. Applications which make use of Intel QuickSync, as with most Adobe programs, are where Intel would have the edge, comparatively speaking. But other applications like Handbrake, a video transcoder software, would see AMD have the edge thanks to the higher core counts. Gaming is where things get a little different. The Ryzen 5 4600H in the MateBook 14 does come with integrated Vega graphics, while the Intel Core i5 10210U in the MateBook 13 is actually paired with a dedicated NVIDIA GeForce MX250 for graphics. Needless to say, the MateBook 13 performs better in gaming. You will be able to easily get a near 60 frames per second experience in CSGO with the MX250, and even AAA titles would at least give you a decent 30 frames per second. The integrated Vega graphics with the Ryzen chip will definitely lag behind, but that's not to say it can't game at all. If you're just playing less demanding games like CSGO, Minecraft or even Genshin, it will still provide you a decent experience. But with all that said, there are still other things that you have to consider. 
For instance, the MateBook 14 doesn't have the Ryzen 7 option any longer, at least here in Singapore. And with that, you do also lose touchscreen support. If that's important to you, go for the MateBook 13 because that has it. But if let's say you need standard USB ports, now you're on the other side of the story. The MateBook 14 does feature two standard USB 3.2 ports while also featuring a full-size HDMI and still does have at least a single USB Type-C port. But the last factor to consider, and arguably the most important, has to be the price. The MateBook X Pro costs a whopping 2,698 Singapore dollars. As we've mentioned before, take this out of the equation. This laptop makes no sense at all. As for the MateBook 13, it will set you back a reasonable 1,598 Singapore dollars, but the MateBook 14 is even better at 1,298 Singapore dollars. Out of the three main laptops which Huawei have in their lineup, our pick at this moment have to go to the MateBook 14. It has a slightly bigger display, the AMD Ryzen 5 does perform admirably for light tasks, but most of all, it really is value-packed for the price you're paying for. Had this not been an option, our pick would have still went to the MateBook 13, but now that this is available, our pick goes to the MateBook 14. But what about you? What's your choice? Let us know in the comment section down below, and if there are affiliate links in the description, do check it out. If you do, thanks for your support. Don't forget to subscribe to us, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Till the next one, see ya!